Today is a video I certainly hope I won't regret making. Join me as I unbox 20 plus year old Extreme Ghostbusters action figures. Hey everybody, Jason here of GhostbustersNews.com and as always, Ghostbusters News right here on YouTube. And yes, today we're taking a look at the main core Extreme Ghostbusters action figure line. This is part two in our Extreme Ghostbusters video. If you missed our first part, be sure to subscribe to Ghostbusters News right here on YouTube and check out our past video. We've got a link to that right down below in the description. But for those of you that did miss the video, I recently snagged an entire set of Extreme Ghostbuster action figures from Blake of the Saskatchewan Ghostbusters. He hooked me up for a good price. So there's a couple figures that I've got duplicates of, which means I'm, I'm gonna open them and, and put them on display. But let's kick it off once again with the main four Ghostbusters. We're gonna be taking a look at Kylie Griffin here. We're gonna be taking a look at Dr. Egon Spangler. Uh, also, we've got Roland of the group. And last but not least, we're gonna be taking a look at Eduardo here. Oh, wait, one, one second there, guys. I've got a phone call. Apologize for this. Hello? Hey. Yeah. Oh no, I'm just reviewing the uh, the old school Extreme Ghostbuster figures from 1997. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got Eduardo right here. Eduardo? No, no, his name is Eduardo. What do you mean, read the packaging? E-D- Oh, wait a minute. His name actually is Eduardo. Oh, I'm... feel like an idiot. So yeah, in my last video, uh, I apparently called Eduardo Eduardo. Um, I know there's a slight difference there. Some didn't pick up on that. Some did, and they were pretty vocal about that. So uh, going forward, I gotta make sure that I call him Eduardo, because, I mean, that's been a blind spot for me, apparently, ever since I first saw the series in 1997. Eduardo, not Eduardo. <laughs> so we might as well first take a look at Eduardo right here. Uh, let's use the power of video editing, and he's in the package, and now... Ta-da! And this is actually the very first ever extreme Ghostbuster figure of like an actual Ghostbuster I've ever actually held in my hand. And I gotta say, I'm um, I'm not really that impressed by it. Let's do a quick comparison between Eduardo here and of course one of the original real Ghostbuster action figures of Dr. Peter Venkman. And just notice the height difference between these two. I never actually realized how small the extreme Ghostbuster figures were. The face here, while it does look like Eduardo from Extreme Ghostbusters, is a little scary. I mean, those are some pretty defiant cheekbones there. And of course, one of the biggest criticisms is the fact that his outfit, uh, same with all these other characters in this Extreme Ghostbusters line, their outfit does not match what we saw in the original animated series at all. With the colors being totally different here. Kind of actually makes me want to buy an extra set and just customize and paint them accordingly. I also find the arm movement when it comes to the Eduardo figure a little weird as well. With his right arm uh, being able to be moved up and down, with his left not featuring the same articulation. Now by far my favorite thing with this figure is the Extreme Ghostbuster themed Proton Pack because aside from the blue color tone, they nailed it here. I mean, Trendmasters did go a little crazy with the sticker application, with the caution striping, the Extreme Ghostbusters logo, uh, the Danger Radioactive sticker, but there's no denying that this looks like the Proton Pack from Extreme Ghostbusters. Of course, it does come with a proton wand that is quite oversized and not at all accurate to what we saw in Extreme Ghostbusters. In fact, the Egon and Roland action figures, uh, their proton guns are actually a bit more similar to what we saw with this proton pack. We're going to touch on that a bit more here in a few, so keep watching. One thing to add to our comments about the proton pack is there's actually no area whatsoever to actually holster the wand itself, meaning that your Ghostbuster is always going to be carrying the wand in hand. Now when it comes to packing accessories, each one of the Ghostbusters does feature a little orange ghost trap as seen in the Extreme Ghostbusters cartoon show. As I mentioned in the previous video, the mold here does look good. I mean, it, it does the job, it's serviceable. And they also come with a small custom ghost, uh, Eduardo here coming with this uh, blue ghost. It's got these two large claws coming out of the side, we got this big claw coming out of the mouth, the pink gums there, the over the top bulgy eyes. I, I dig this ghost here, I like it. Coming up next, we've got fan favorite Kylie Griffin. And as I mentioned with the Eduardo figure, outfits are totally different here. She does not look anything like what we saw in the animated series, uh, especially when it comes to the color tone. And while she certainly does look a bit gothic here, I don't know, man. That face makes me think of Kylie, but like Kylie when she's uh, much older, I would say. There's something about those eyes there that are just kind of creeping me out, like, ugh. Maybe it's because it's one of the few Kylie Griffin figures we've ever actually gotten. 
But I do feel like if I went in there and I repainted her to look more like the animated series, maybe kind of like lightened up some of the details on the face when it came to how dark everything is with like the eyeliner and everything, I could have a pretty nice figure here. Shifting over to the Proton Pack, once again, the exact same mold as what we got with the Eduardo figure. The only change up now is the Proton Pack is more of this kind of like yellowish green tone. Sticker application is identical, aside from the fact though that the caution striping is uh, red and white here rather than yellow and black. Oh crap, and one thing I forgot to mention when it came to these figures is their weapons are actually uh, projectiles. So unlike the old uh, real Ghostbuster figures that just had like that twirling effect with their proton pack, these actually shoot, so kudos to the Extreme Ghostbusters guys. When it comes to loading the missile inside the, uh, the thrower, all you gotta do is match up the two little red dots on it there. You'll hear a little snap, and then you are good to go. Got Kylie all ready here, and we just kind of like flip this in the back, and there we go. Got about six feet of distance there, guys, so after 20 plus years, their springs inside still work. Now when it comes to the pack-in ghost, Kylie comes with probably the most popular one of all. We have got Slimer, and from the front, I really, really dig this minifigure. The paint app looks fantastic, and this just screams Extreme Ghostbusters Slimer. Now where I don't like the figure is the back end. Yes, I know I've got a thing for Slimer booty. People have talked to me about that. I've addressed it before, but just look how slender his back end is. It looks like Slimer hasn't eaten for weeks. I mean, I would be genuinely concerned if I was a Ghostbuster and I saw Slimer in the firehouse looking in this manner. If he was just rounder and fatter in the back end, we would have an amazing, amazing pack and Slimer figure here. But at this point, um, he's okay. Once again, love the front, not so much the back. After Kylie, coming up next, we have got Roland of the Extreme Ghostbusters crew. And just look at that face. Isn't he so just happy to be here? I do like the fact, though, they give him his, uh, like, striped haircut in the back. That looks actually pretty good. But as the trend when it comes to these action figures, the outfit is nothing like what we saw in the animated Extreme Ghostbusters TV show once again. In fact, rather than just having him, like, in a typical, like, flight suit like he wore in the show, I don't even know what you'd call this. Another odd change is the fact that they gave him uh, this kind of big tank for a proton pack. This is uh, not typically what they wore in the animated series. I mean, I was expecting more... So I mean, I'm all for uh, diversity and, you know, kind of mixing up a bit and giving us uh, some different style proton packs and things like that. But I kind of would wish that all four of these characters would just come with what we saw in the actual series rather than something like this. Still though, the look of it, it's pretty cool. I mean, it kind of harkens back to like the slime blowers of Ghostbusters 2. We've got the caution striping there, danger, radioactive. Now one thing to note when it comes to this, uh, yes, the wand itself is projectile, much like what we saw with Kylie and Eduardo, um, but the actual wand here is much closer to what we saw in the actual animated uh, series rather than what Kylie and Eduardo actually got on their proton packs. I mean, I know the colors don't match up perfectly in this case, but giving Kylie uh, Roland's gun, this is definitely a lot more authentic to what we saw in the animated series. And if you did like a custom uh, paint job on this, made everything kind of like a shiny metallic gray, uh, it would certainly look the part. Now back to Roland, his pack and ghost is this little green guy here with a ton of eyes. And I don't know why, but I seem to recall, I think there was like a, an 80s toy line uh, that was made of like germs and stuff like that. And that's kind of the vibe I'm getting off of this ghost. He just looks like an overly large, like, germ. He's molded in a light green key lime kind of plastic. And of course, once again, he does have the uh, yellow paint app and the black paint app for the eyeballs. He's also got like this little gnarly mouth uh, at the bottom as well. Coming up last, we've got the only returning Ghostbuster from the real Ghostbusters line. We have got Dr. Egon Spangler. Of course, he's rocking the green flight suit there. Um, taking a quick look at the face, um, I, I don't hate it. It's definitely the most, uh, I guess, animated out of all four characters, in my opinion. Of course, he's got the glasses there on his face. Um, the paint up on mine, though, I'm not too sure because it was, like, inside the box for so long, but it does seem like a bit of the, uh, the blue from his proton pack strap has rubbed off on the left uh, side of his face there. Also, taking a look on the right side of his face, you're going to notice a big splotch of brown paint uh, that looks like it was stemmed from his glasses. So that is uh, kind of a bummer there. Also, um, once again, 
I, I think with Egon, because he is a returning character, my expectations were set a bit higher because let's do a quick comparison between this Egon Spangler figure from Extreme and Kenner's real Ghostbusters figure of Egon Spangler. Like, I don't want to scream to high heavens that, oh, real Ghostbusters is so much better, but um, real Ghostbusters in this case, I think, is so much better. The Proton Pack itself is very much like what we saw with the Roland character, exact same molds and everything, just this is blue instead of the orange that we saw. I will say out of the four Ghostbusters in the Extreme line, he has to be probably my second favorite once again, right behind the Kylie figure. Um, some maybe my favorite? I don't know, I'm kind of flipping back and forth between the two, but he definitely gives off the Ghostbuster vibe the most, especially with the, the actual wearing of a flight suit. And his pack and ghost is this uh, purple little looking, almost like a, like a crab ghost, I would say. He's got what looks like crab claws on his hand. He's got the yellow eyes there. Once again, I do really dig all the pack and ghosts with the Extreme Ghostbusters line. I love these guys. Now, before I open the final Extreme Ghostbusters figure that I have here, I do want to touch on a couple of figures that I've had for years. Uh, this one from 1997. It is the action figure of Sam Hain. And I had always wanted a Sam Hain figure. Of course, he was featured in the original Real Ghostbusters animated series. He's in some of the best episodes in that entire show. And while he never actually had an episode dedicated to him in the Extreme Ghostbusters series, I'm really happy Trim Masters actually made this. He's got this green whip in his hand. He's also got the uh, pumpkin, which is removable, exposing this kind of weird, white, simplistic eye underneath. And also, for whatever reason, you can disrobe him and you can take off his entire robe, exposing this very kind of bony underneath body. On top of that, there was also a Slimer action figure as well. Uh, a very large, well, overly sized Slimer action figure. When it comes to comparing the action figure to what we saw in the TV show, probably some of the best molding in the Trend Masters Extreme Ghostbusters line. I mean, this thing looks great. He also originally came with um, some item accessories, some food accessories, a hamburger, and also a donut that you could either shoot out of his mouth or shoot out of his hand. And he also comes with this uh, base at the very bottom, which allows you to spin Slimer around when you move him back and forth. Now, for those wondering, his back end um, is just a big tail. I mean, it's accurate. I don't have to like it, but it's accurate. Coming up last, we're gonna be taking a look at the House Ghost from the Extreme Ghostbusters line. I'm pretty excited for this one because he comes with ectoplasm. He comes with his own canister of slime, guys. And how well has slime aged over the past 20 plus years? We're about to find out. All right, so first impressions, uh, much like my impressions when he was in the package in the last video, I'm getting kind of a strong like Audrey 2 vibe from Little Shop of Horrors. He's got what looks like all these like little pods and mouths all around him. Got random eyeballs on the side, this little creepy face at the bottom as well. They do advertise that the figure does have a launching like eye up here. Now I press the eye in, um, on the back there's like this little red dot. So I feel like if I press that, it'll uh, like shoot the eye off, but I can't really press it in. I may have broken this figure. Now when it comes to the pack in slime, there's little holes in the back of the mouth here. There's a little, also a little hole on the back of here. And it looks like that is where we're gonna pour the slime in and it's gonna like ooze out of the front. All right, so I got the slime in hand and this looks like a motel shampoo bottle. Let's uh, pop the top and uh, man, that slime is, is very liquefied. Pretty much just looks like water on the inside. Let me just uh, unscrew the cap here. And uh, got a little bubble. All right, so I'm gonna pour a little bit on my hand once again, just to see how well this is aged. And um, bad news guys, I mean, this stuff is, is pretty much like, oh, Pretty much water at this point. So uh, I'm not gonna bother like pouring this into that uh, ghost figure because if you could imagine what water looks like coming out of a plastic toy, that's what this is gonna look like. Uh, and I don't wanna waste any more of this. I'd like to have it on display with these figures. Um, yeah, so that's disappointing. All right guys, so uh, I'm gonna go wash up a little bit. Uh, that slime is starting to dry. It's starting to harden a bit on my hand and at the same time starting to, uh, to tingle a little bit. So be sure to subscribe to Ghostbusters News right here on YouTube, Ugh. and I will see you right back here next time.